Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. You know, is it too much for you to ask for leaders who actually represent you? Is it too much to ask for leaders who don't actively embarrass you on a near constant basis, who don't actively work against your interest and spend their time working for the other side and condemning you, the people who they're supposed to represent? Apparently, according to Mitch McConnell and the rest of these clowns, it is too much. And that's why they end up falling for these scams time after time. That's why they end up looking like complete fools, playing into Nancy Pelosi's secret grand plan. Supposed mastermind Nancy Pelosi spins her web and sets up the trap, and Republican leaders fly right into the web like a group of clueless flies. Well, those clueless flies, whether you like it or not, are your leaders, and you're stuck with it because your party refuses to bring the change that Republican voters so desperately want. Want, a change in leadership. Nope. Instead, you're stuck with McCarthy and McConnell and enduring embarrassing moments like these. Let me show you guys what I mean. We've got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, take a look at this. January 6 police snub McConnell and McCarthy during the Congressional Gold Medal Ceremony. For January 6 police, representatives of those receiving awards shake hands with Schumer, then walk past McConnell and McCarthy. And look at this clueless turtle over here, Mitch McConnell looking like an absolute fool and utter embarrassment. At least Kevin McCarthy was smart enough to realize that the whole thing was a damn setup and kept his hand to himself. You know, this kind of takes me back to what I was talking about the other day. All the neocons and the never Trumpers pretending as if Donald Trump's the problem and without Donald Trump, then people are going to want to play ball all of a sudden. Even if you're part of the status quo, even if you're supposedly one of the good Republicans who plays into some of these Democrat narratives, you're still the enemy. And the corrupt Democrat machine is going to do everything in its power to eat you alive. Mitch McConnell thought that he was on the good side of this issue. He's taken the Nancy Pelosi, Liz Cheney stance. He He's directed money to all of the Never Trumper campaigns. He's gone across the media and done his condemnation tour, condemning the MAGA extremist threat. And then this is how they treat him. They spin these despicable narratives. You fall for the narrative. These neocons play defense over and over again. They spend more time condemning their own party and their own voters than they spend condemning the other side and the absolute freaking lunacy, especially on cultural issues. And look at the results. Embarrassment. You know, at this point, it's almost like Democrats are more based. And I don't mean that from the perspective of policy. Their policies and their cultural stances are absolutely terrible, obviously. But at least they're not messing around. At least they're willing to get their hands a little bit dirty in the political sphere. Meanwhile, these cowardly Republicans continue to get walked all over. It's disgraceful. It's cringe. It's humiliating. And it's a total slap in the face to voters. There's still so many unanswered questions about the whole January 6th thing. The Democrats have worked so hard to artificially keep this in the news cycle for nearly two years straight pushing non-stop conspiracy, lies, doctored evidence, ignoring all of the important questions and facts about what happened on that day. Yet despite all of the wrongdoing, despite all of the corrupt manipulation from the January 6th committee and beyond, Republican leaders continue to feed into it. What were they doing even showing up there in the first place? They're willing to show up for Nancy Pelosi's little fancy ceremony, but they still refuse to stand up for people who are currently being abused by the legal system. There are people who are still sitting in solitary confinement for nearly two years on nonviolent supposed offenses from the events of January 6th. There's people who are being abused in prison by prison guards. Regular folks who walked in the Capitol after Capitol Police officers opened the door for them and they're being treated worse than scum. They're being treated like they're members of Al-Qaeda. And here's what Republican leaders are doing instead of advocating for these people who are being treated, in my opinion, so incredibly unfairly. That's what I mean by it's a slap in the face.
The whole thing's a sham, it's a political scam. It's been totally weaponized and politicized. And not only is it a slap in the face to Republican voters and frankly voters in general, but it seems it's also a slap in the face to Capitol Police officers who are sick of the whole thing. How it's become such a media sensation, a prime time event and a weaponized political tool. Speaking of weaponized political tools, we all remember Mr. Capitol Police Officer Fanone. His last name, Fanone, Fanone. This guy pictured next to Hunter Biden all buddy-buddy with his very cool web tattoo on his neck. Almost symbolism for Nancy Pelosi's web that I was referencing earlier. Well, apparently, even Washington police officers can't stand this guy. Ryan J. Riley from NBC News reports, New. Members of the Metropolitan Police Department Special Operations Division heckled Officer Mike Fanone at the Congressional Gold Medal Ceremony. Fanone tells me, quote, They called me a piece of S and mockingly called me a great effing hero while clapping. Fanone says they called him a disgrace, said he was not a cop anymore, and said he didn't belong at the ceremony. It happened in the rotunda, he said. And the scoop continues from Peter Herman, who writes, Fanone told me, I mean, at the end of the day, if those people are too ignorant to understand what I've been advocating for these past two years, and the fact that I had a lot to do with us being here today, then F them. Oh, people understand very clearly that you had a lot to do with what we saw today. And people understand very clearly what you've been advocating for the past two years. You've been advocating for Nancy Pelosi's little Democrat political strategy. Look at these two embrace themselves. You've been doing the DNC's bidding. You knew exactly what you were doing. And that's probably what they meant when they were sarcastically clapping for you, saying you're a real effing hero. The whole thing is nothing but kabuki theater. It's political theater. And that's not even necessarily to take a stance that what happened on January 6th was the greatest moment in American history. Some people hold that stance. Some people think it was the worst thing to ever happen in American history. I mean, let's just completely omit what my opinion is on the topic entirely. I'm not even talking about that. Regardless of my opinions on the actual event, the narratives, the lies, the deception, and the clear political weaponization that followed the events of January 6th were utterly disingenuous, dishonest, filled with spite and revenge. It was all clearly an orchestrated plot. It seems as though many of the police officers clearly understand this. I think most Americans understand this based on the polling data that we've seen. And the craziest part, I mean what really baffles the mind, is that Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy can't see it or refuse to see it, and showed up to Nancy Pelosi's little scam medal ceremony, only to have the spotlight turned into them for them to become the headlines. Nobody's really even been talking about the medal ceremony or the individuals who took part in it, everyone is talking about this embarrassing moment and Nancy Pelosi once again dunking on Republican GOP rhino neocon leaders. It's just so humiliating. Another embarrassing, disgraceful moment, but not surprising in the least. That's what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to this channel if you guys are up for it. I'm gonna get out of here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.